There are a lot of places where you can learn how to control insects, but there's only one in the world that will teach you how to grow them. This fall, Mississippi State University will teach its 16th Annual International Insect Rearing Workshop on campus in Starkville. There are businesses that need to grow insects, and it's not as easy as you think. Ten of the participants will be from outside the United States. The workshop is already full for this fall, and there's a waiting list. Farmer Amy Taylor first brought us this story last November. To most of us, insects are just bugs. But to Mississippi State University entomologist Dr. Frank Davis and other researchers, insects are an essential part of our lives and food sources. Over the past 40 years, insect rearing at MSU has developed into a program recognized worldwide. Dr. Davis elaborates on various types of insect rearing. For instance, crickets and, and uh, mealworms and all for the pet food industry. Okay, they rear that type of insect, all right? There are people in the agricultural area that rear bollworms. Oh, they rear tarnished plant bugs that are all on cotton and all of the other lepidoptera that feed on soybeans and corn. So you have that group that are growing pest insects to do research on to come up with, with uh, solutions to them. And uh, then you've got the butterfly people, and they rear them for school children, education. They also rear them for weddings. In addition, certain insects like the black soldier fly are being considered as healthy food sources for catfish. Particularly, Dr. Davis' research has involved rearing the southwestern corn borer, cotton boll weevil, and later other insects such as the fall armyworm, corn earworm, and the tobacco budworm for developing plants' resistance to these pests, as well as pesticide and herbicide research. Developing insect-resistant crop seed and making it available to farmers and seed companies helps maximize the health of crops like corn, cotton, and soybeans. The healthier the plant, the more abundant our crops and food sources will be. With this in mind, Davis and other researchers thought of the idea to develop a formal insect rearing center. In the year 1999, we got together and began to plan an insect rearing center concept. And we had been around the world, some of us. I had been to, uh, to places all over the world, helping them with their corn work, helping them with their rearing program. And we, we began to realize, well, there's no formal education, even in entomology departments, anywhere that we are aware of in the world, that teaches people how to rear insects. The Insect Rearing Center at Mississippi State University is quite a unique facility. Insects such as the southwestern corn borer, fall armyworm, and tobacco budworm are reared from larvae to pupa to adult. First, the larvae are actually placed into their food source, a diet specially formulated at the center. They're housed in a room where temperature and humidity are strictly monitored, and once they reach pupa stage, they're placed in a new area where they grow into adults. Dr. Davis says knowing the facility was likely the only one of its kind in the world is what sparked the idea for an international workshop. So in 2000, the intensive five-day workshop titled Principles and Procedures for Rearing High-Quality Insects, designed to cover all major areas of lab rearing insects and offered on a worldwide basis, was born. Tom Riddell, air filtration specialist with Air Filter Sales and Services in Jackson, said as his discussion focused on how air filtration is connected to insect rearing. I'm not an entomologist. I am a crow teaching with eagles. But there are so many more beneficial items they're finding out today with different research facilities, but they have to be able to know the basics of cleanliness, uh, diet preparation, how to house them properly, and then not harm the people who are doing the research. What I talk to them about is the effective of movement of air and the capture of particles within the air so that we can have a cleaner environment. That way they are reducing the uh, probabilities of viruses and bacteria on the subject insects. Clean air is such a high priority that the facility uses the same type of air cleaning system that you see in hospitals. Additionally, workshop participants were educated about pathology issues such as fungi, bacteria, viruses, protozoan infections in microsporidia and parasites. Additionally, Gary Needham, entomologist with Syngenta in the United Kingdom, talks about how insect rearing relates 
relates to his line of research. I rear pest insects for uh, research into crop protection. I look for potential chemicals that could be used in uh, insecticide and pesticide products. Our aim is to bring plant potential to life, so we look for various ways to get more out of less, basically. I mean, the population is growing. The land space we have to, to grow these crops, to feed a, the ever-increasing world population is getting smaller, so we need to get more from the plant. Needham says he'll use what he's learned, such as temperature and humidity control, when he goes back to his own laboratory. In addition to insect rearing for plant research, Tom Riddell says it's also practiced to be used for pharmaceutical research. There's good molds and fungi that can be grown. There's very good, a lot of protein that comes out of certain types of insects. And so the pharmacies are now determining which insects and colonies that need to be promoted and grown in order to produce uh, more products that are beneficial to the health of people around the world, especially third world countries. You can pull molds and viruses off of them. You can find out what causes disease how it's transported. With the vital role insects play in our environment, Dr. Frank Davis and Gary Needham say our world would not survive without insects. What would happen to us if we lost all of our pollinating insects? Well, you would, you would not have, you would not be able to grow certain plant crops. And that's why the honeybee is so important to the United States, and that's why they're spending so much money uh, trying to make sure that we don't lose our honeybees. Insect pollination contributes to over 130 billion dollars in, into the crop business, into the crop industry a year. Um, they contribute to about two thirds of the food we put on our plate. Um, and if they disappeared tomorrow, within a matter of months, we'd be starving to death. In the 12 years of successful international insect rearing workshops, Dr. Frank Davis says the event has become so popular it's sold out every year. As many as 25 participants from one company have attended the workshop to gain knowledge in those nine areas that are so important to successfully rearing insects. From Mississippi State University, I'm Amy Taylor reporting. And if you'd like to watch this story again, you can go to our Farm Week website, Facebook page, or YouTube page. If you're interested in more information on the International Insect Rearing Workshop, we'll have its contact information as well. That's farmweek.msucares.com. Well, Aiden, the latest edition of the uh, workshop takes place in early November. The 26-member class is already full. There's a waiting list. Uh, Ten of the students will hail from outside the United States. Nine work in the public sector and 17 work for private business. So I think that speaks to the content of that workshop. I think it does. Speaks to it very well.